Imagine it's your last day on earth and you have one meal left. What would it be? So I asked my wife this question and here I present to you Jen's last ever meal. So I've seen some of these videos going around and look, I for one probably wouldn't be very hungry knowing it was my last meal ever on earth. But when I spoke to Jen about this idea, she got very excited about the prospect of all this guilt-free food. So for anyone that knows my wife, you will not be overly surprised by her first choice. This is her go-to comfort food. It's a staple in Korean cuisine. And I'm talking about, of course, kimchi cheke. So for anyone that doesn't know this dish, this is a Korean spicy kimchi stew. It's filled with goodness and it's also filled with loads of spice. Because for me, the first time I moved to America, I met Jen's parents. They took me to a lovely traditional Korean restaurant. It was hot outside. I was wearing a sweater. And this was the first time I realized how Korean food, the spice level, is on another level to what I'm used to. So I was covered in sweat. And as you know, you got to impress the parents by enjoying all the food. And look, I was enjoying it, but that was the moment I realized I had to build up my spice ability level quite quickly. And this is where we are today. So let's get on with the dish. So first up, we are going to chop an onion. We're gonna slice this nice and fine so it tastes divine. Set that aside and pop on some spring onion, also known as green onion. Again, we're gonna chop this nice and fine and set it aside. Then it's time to whip out the good stuff, the sliced kimchi. This is beautiful fermented cabbage. We're gonna chop this into lovely chunks and then set aside in a bowl. And then to feel fine, we're gonna get some brine and pop some kimchi juice into a bowl. Now for some firm tofu. We're going to drain, cut in half lengthways, then we're going to cut half inch slices. We'll find a plate that perfectly matches, then it's time to cook. We'll get a pan and then we'll add the kimchi, the onions, the green onions, then some red chili powder, just two teaspoons, a little goes a long way, two teaspoons of sugar, and then the red chili paste gotcha chan. Just one tablespoon. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of sesame oil. Then we'll pop in our brine. Then we're gonna add some broth, which I made earlier using this anchovy ready-made pack with kelp. Now we just mix this lovely combination of goodness and then cover and cook for about 10 minutes. Then we're gonna add some tuna. And of course you can use pork instead. Give it a mix, then cover again. And then we'll let that simmer for about 20 minutes, get those flavors nice and infused, get to know each other. I also wanna use this time to thank you guys for your patience with me not posting much on YouTube these days. And look, of course, with fatherhood, everything going on, but for me, I found this wonderful avenue called breathwork and understanding how unbelievably transformative it can be for yourself, for other people, and holding a community for other people to come together, have human connection, and using breathing, meditation, these tools, for us to, to break away from those walls we have and to open ourselves up, connect to ourselves on a deeper level, connect to other people on a deeper level. And that's something that's really exciting me. I'm doing a lot of sessions. I will keep you guys posted. I will integrate that into some of my content. But for now, I'm gonna keep posting more stuff and I'll keep you guys updated. Let's see if our soup's ready. Now we'll add our sliced tofu, baste it in the good stuff, and then cover for just five minutes more. Oh, look at that. Now our lovely kimchi cheke is good to serve. Right, so this next dish had to be on there. I mean, this is one of, this might be Jen's favorite side dish ever. I mean, when the side dish outshines almost any main dish, you know it's a good one. And today we're gonna to be making mac and cheese. Oh, this dish, it's dreamy, it's creamy. And the beautiful thing about this, there's only three ingredients in this recipe. So it's quick for you, easy for me, and tasty for my wife. So we're gonna need a nice pot, two cups of milk, and bring this to the boil. Then we're gonna add our lovely elbow macaroni pasta. We're gonna cook this for about 10 to 12 minutes until the sauce thickens up and really gets enriched and beautiful to the sight. And to make things better, we'll get the cheese. Give it a mix, set it aside, and we're ready to serve. Right, so next up, we are going to be making a dish that oozes class, it's elevated like a delicious delight, and it would make you think my wife is a queen. And of course, we are talking about instant ramen. 
I'm not surprised she put this on the list. I have seen my wife eat an instant ramen at every hour in the day for breakfast at 3 a.m. You name it, she's enjoyed it. So no better way to enjoy it as our last ever meal. So we're gonna kick things off with two cups of water. Bring that to a lovely boil. We're gonna get our spicy ramen, pop that in, break it apart, add the sauce, add the seasoning, give it a good old fashioned mix up. Then we're gonna drop in an egg. We're just gonna let this poach for about a minute or so and finish it off with a sprinkle of cheese. Now our lovely classy elevated instant ramen is ready to serve. And to pair with the ramen, we have some white rice, some sliced kimchi, seaweed, two corn dogs from mochi nut, a mochi nut donut, and there you have it. Right, babe, welcome to your last ever meal. What do you think? I feel like I manifested this. Wait, do you remember yeah. when we did that Shake Shack video? You asked me what would be my last ever meal. Oh, yeah. It was this. Wow. It was this. I knock on wood that this is not actually my last ever meal. Yeah, true. There is a slight morbid uh, side to this. But, you know, I think in life it's important to appreciate every moment like it could be your last. Exactly. If there's death is looming, yeah. so make the most of it. You went straight <laughs> to the morbid part. I was, trying, I was trying to bring it back. I love a Korean corn dog. Cheers. Mmm. Yup. Tell me why you picked a corn dog. Mmm. I mean, you don't need to explain it really, do you? That was the explanation. <laughs> Koreans just know how to make a freaking corn dog. Mm -hmm. The cheese, the potato wrapped. I feel like this also kind of transports me back into the free-spirited days in my 20s. Speaking of Korean, let's go into the kimchi jjigae. Can kimchi you pass spirit. me my, my trough? I feel like this is the first time you've ever made kimchi jjigae. So I am excited yeah. to see what it tastes like. I okay. really hope so. <laughs> I mean, from the color, it looks good. That's all that matters. Hey. Yeah? Hey. Oh my God. Throw some rice cakes in there. We got oh, a yeah. party. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's hot. <clears throat> I know, it's really spicy. Have it with the rice. Or have it with some mac and cheese to offset it. Oh, it's so spicy. <laughs> I've had one bite, guys. Look at me. Spicy food is not like your forte. No, and it? I've tried. I've tried. I know that, you know, if you grow up with it, of course you get more used to it like anything. I'm just not very good with spice. Mm. Mm hmm Good. Mm hmm Top remark so far. Yeah? Wow, this is freaking like bomb. The, good. Mac and cheese. Also, good. Three ingredients are just, just simple. Mm. Milk, cheese, and macaroni. If we go to a buffet and there's mac and cheese, keep it on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, let's try some of the fire noodles. Okay. So I have an explanation. Okay, go on. <laughs> I don't usually make these because um, they're again too spicy for me. These are actually really spicy. Really spicy. Yeah. But I kind of made them a bit like ramen, a bit more soupy than you would usually have them. Right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I apologize for that. So if it was your last day, then uh, it wouldn't matter. So you'd be dying anyway. So. <laughs> I mean, actually it's pretty good. It's supposed to be a lot spicier. It's more aggressive. More this aggressive. is like a mild version. I actually won't get heartburn, I think. If it was your last day on earth, mm -hmm. what would you do? If you could do anything, you got 24 hours. Okay. If it was my last day on earth, I still want to have like wake up, have my morning routine. <laughs> you want to get make to the gym. I, I kind of, kind of. I would just wake up at like 5 a.m. Do like some writing, make a wedding's breakfast when he wakes up. And then I think it'd be nice if like we went to, maybe go to like Malibu or something, I'll go to the ocean, just lay out, read a book, dance, mm. throw, put some music on, and then mm. just have a nice lunch somewhere. Or no, we have a picnic. We'll have a picnic mm. with all my favorite foods. And then at the end, we'll, we'll have like a really nice dinner somewhere with all our friends yeah. and my family. And then mm. we have a big party at our house, house party. Sounds like a great day. Yeah? Yeah. It's a shame we gotta wait till we die to do it, but... I know, right? I feel like I'm just like trying to think about all the fun stuff that I like to do. It's interesting that you would still do the, the normal stuff, going to mm -hmm. the gym, and it's for your own sanity, because even on your last day on Earth, you still want to do it. Yeah! I like that. Thank you so much. Of course! This is, I can get used to this. Yeah? Yeah. And it's only your last day on Earth once. I can think of a couple of more things. Yeah? Thank you so much for this of meal. Everything was absolutely delicious. Well, it was my pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your patience as always, for me not posting very often. But for, <laughs> but for now, I've been Ben, you've been fantastic. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye!